about tefillah. And uh, for me, I think that tefillah is an incredible opportunity in and of itself, day in and day out. But I think it also comes with great challenge. Uh, I think the question is, how do we find meaning in structured prayer? Right, I open up my siddur, the words are already there. And, and I think that the challenge really is for, for many of us is to connect to those words, to connect to those, those structure, the structure of tefillah. And the question is, how do I do that on a daily basis? And the Gemara in Masachet Brachot, Daf Kaf Vav Amur Bet, grapples with this question. And the Machloket, the argument on that Daf, is basically, why do we daven? Why do we have three tefillot a day? Again, we daven in the morning, shacharit, in the afternoon, mincha, and at night, arvit. And the question is, what's the basis for these tefillot? And there are two opinions given on that daf of Gemara. Opinion number one is that the avot davened, and we'll see in a few minutes uh, where the psukim talk about the avot davening, but it seems that the avot davened at these specific times, and we want to emulate the avot, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. The other opinion is that the, the, the tefillot are there to commemorate the korbanot that were given in the Beit HaMikdash. Um, for those of you who are familiar or not familiar, there was a korban tamid, a daily korban, a daily offering that was brought in the Beit HaMikdash every single day, twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. At night, they would burn all the leftover fats and, and organs that were not burnt during the day, they were burnt at night. And these three um, points in the Beit HaMikdash are what we're commemorating. And the question is, why do, we, why do we daven? Is it because of the Avot or is it because of the Korbanot? And the Gemara brings proof for both sides, meaning, and we'll see in a few minutes, the, the psukim, how we see the avot davening, but also the idea that the korbanot were consistent day in and day out. What I'd like to do right now is to think about the deeper idea behind this argument, behind this machluket. The question is, how do we connect to our tefillah? Is our tefillah this spontaneous calling out to Hashem, which is basically what it was for the avot? The avot were in despair. They had a problem. They called out to God at that moment. They didn't look at their watch to see, or the sun, to see what time it was. Is it time to daven or not? But they just spontaneously spoke to God. Is that what our, our tefillah is supposed to be like? Or is our tefillah a structured prayer? Right, meaning, when you think about the Beit HaMikdash and the way it functioned, it was all about timing and structure. The sun started coming up, they started the work for the Korban Tamid of the morning. The sun started going down, they started the Korban Tamid of the afternoon. Meaning, it was not based on, I don't want to say not based on people's feeling, but there was a structure, there was a time, and that's what the Korbanot were about. And I think that what we're grappling with today is exactly these two points. I think that the answer is that our tefillah is both of these things, that we need to find inspiration and personal connection in the structure that the, the rabbis gave us. When I open up that my, my siddur and I'm about to daven, the words are already given to me. I think the idea now is to figure out how do I connect? Again, if I don't connect, that's also okay. It's okay to daven even if I'm not in the mood today with the hope that the Ezrat Hashem later on today I'm going to be in the mood or tomorrow I'm going to be in the mood. But what I'd like to think about now is how do we find that personal meaning in the words that we have in the Siddur? And I think the idea here is as the Gemara shows that the Avot turn to Hashem in prayer, and each of them in their own special way. And each one, I believe, created an archetype of prayer. And I'd like to think about what that means. So uh, I'd like to share my screen with you. Hold on one second. And to show you what I mean. Okay. 
the, the Gemara brings the following psukim to prove to us how um, the Avot basically instituted the tefillot that we have on a daily basis. So if we look, Abraham, it says that uh, this is actu actually around the destruction of Sodom, and it says, Vayashkem Abraham baboker el hamakom asher amad sham et pnei Hashem. Right? The next morning, Abraham hurried to the place where he had stood before, um, before, the, the, before the Lord. Uh, and the idea is that Abraham wakes up baboker. And the Gemara says in, in Masechet Brachot, as I mentioned, ah, he woke up in the morning and he dug into Hashem. Ah, that must be shacharit. Right? We see that Abraham instituted shacharit. Let's go to Yitzchak. It says, about Yitzchak, Vayitzei Yitzchak lasuach basadeh lifnot erev, Vayisa enav vayar behinei gmalim ba'im. This is actually when, uh, after the story of uh, Eliezer going to find Rivka, and Rivka is being brought to Yitzchak, and exactly this moment, right, it says, and Isaac went out walking in the field toward the evening, and he looked up and he saw camels approaching. And the next pasuk explains, I would say, a very romantic uh, picture of, of Yitzchak looking and seeing Rivka coming. Rivka sees him and falls off the camel uh, gracefully or maybe not gracefully. But the idea is that Yitzchak goes out to the sadet, to the field, lifnot erev, in the afternoon. It's about to be the evening, and he goes out to Davin. The Gemara here says, this is Mincha. What is he doing out and, and uh, Davining to Hashem? It must be that he's Davining Mincha. We'll get to in a minute how we know that he's Davining. But let's go to Yaakov. Yaakov is running, he just, um, I don't want to use the word stole, but maybe we should, right? He just got the brachot or stole the bracha from his father Yitzchak instead of Esav, and he realizes that he's in mortal danger. He's running out of his house, and he, he runs away, and the pasuk says, Vayifuga b'makom vayelen sham kiba ha-shemesh, vayikach ma'avnei ha-makom vayasem mirashatav vayashka b'makom ha-hu. It says that he came upon a certain place, that's Vayifga. He happened upon this place and he stopped there for the night, for the sun had set, Kiba uh, HaShemesh. You're right if you're asking Kiba HaShemesh, which sounds like it's saying that the sun is coming, but the Mefarshim explained that it means that he, it's, the sun is going, and it's basically the nighttime, and he ends up sleeping in this, in this spot, uh, if this, the, this pasuk sounds familiar, it's right before he has the dream about his, the ladder, right, Jacob's ladder. Um, this is the pasuk that comes right before. So again, the Gemara says, here you see that he gets to this place and it's nighttime and he davenes to Hashem. Now let's take a step back. How do we know that they're davening? It says that they're standing or, you know, how do I know that there's tefillah here? So the Gemara explains, and let's go get back again to the psukim. Avraham, it says that he stood, Ahmad. Now, those of you who are familiar, when we say Shmonasre, it's also called the Amida, because we stand before God. The Gemara says, Avraham stood, it must be that he was davening. Let's go to Yitzchak. It says that Yitzchak went out Lasuach Basadeh. Now, here it says to go out walking in the field, but the Gemara says Lasuach is from the word sicha, to have a conversation. So uh, Yitzchak is in the field conversing with someone when he sees Rivka. And the Gemara explains that basically he is, he's conversing with Hashem. And the third one is Yaakov, vayifga b'makom. And lifgoa, again, I meant, I, as I said before, it means to happen upon a place. The Gemara explains again, this idea is about tefillah. He happens to come upon this place and Yaakov is going to daven there to Hashem. What I'd like to now show you is a summary of what we've just seen. Again, we have Abraham who in the morning stood before God, Yitzchak in the afternoon conversing with God, and Yaakov at night who happens upon God. And what I'd like to suggest right now 
is these are a kind of, uh, again, as I mentioned, archetypes, but they're meant to inspire something in us. As you can see, each one of the avot is davening at a different time during the day. So I'd like to take a second and just think about what do these times during the day mean to us? The morning, the afternoon, and the night. I think that they have different meanings to different people, but I want you to think about in the morning when you wake up, you're fresh, you're ready for a new day, you have all these plans, all these expectations. That's one type of feeling that I might have. What do I feel in the afternoon? Uh, for me personally, I always feel very busy, right? When Mincha comes around, it's very difficult because I have to stop what I'm doing in order to take time out, right? So in the afternoon, I'm busy with my daily affairs. I can maybe look back and say, mm, I had certain plans this morning. Am I on the right path to that plan that I set out this morning? Right? What about at night? What am I thinking about at night? Maybe one could suggest it's dark, it's scary, I might feel alone. Or for those of you who are night people, I might feel energized. I might be able to take stock in my whole day. So as you can see, each one of these time periods gives us a different perspective on our day. Or I want to suggest also on our life, right? The morning of our life, the afternoon of our life, and the nighttime. I think that what this, this is trying to show is that every time we dive in, there are different feelings that we have, right? When I dive in in the morning, I have very different feelings than I will dive in in the afternoon and when I will dive in at night. And I think that one part of that is what time of day it is and what I'm feeling at that moment. The next thing I want to think about is how they davened. Again, as you see here, each one davened in a different way. And what I'd like to suggest is, again, these are inspirations for our tefillah. What does that mean? When someone stands, what kind of feeling are you getting? I think the idea is standing is very formal. Uh, we talk about standing before the king who is God, right? We talk about Hashem, who is Malkenu, right? Today we said Avinu Malkenu. We, dip, we, we connect to God in different ways throughout our day and throughout our lives. So I think to stand, la amod, is very formal, maybe with some trepidation or fear or awe, right? I feel like that's our relationship of at Hashem, the, the idea that we recognize that God is our king as opposed to this idea of lasuach basade, like to converse. How do I converse? That's talking to my friends, talking to someone who I feel very comfortable with. I feel like when Yitzchak was davening, there was a familiarity to it. I think the idea is more about the avinu part of avinu malkinu, right? The, the, the child talking to the parent, a loving relationship. Again, not to say that the, the king and the subject is not a loving relationship, but it's a different feeling for me. And I think um, the last one, Paga, right? Again, Yaakov is running for his life. I feel like this feeling is unfortunately what some of us feel when there's an emergency, when there's a tragedy, when there's even great joy, that spontaneous feeling of I need to talk to God right now. That's paga. I want to meet God right now, not tomorrow or in three hours. Right now, there's an urgency about it. Again, sometimes it's for bad, sometimes it's for good. But I think the idea here is that the avot are setting up for us different ways to relate to our tefillah and to relate to Hashem through our tefillah. Is it that I'm bright and ready for my day? Is it that I'm looking back to see if I've done all the things I needed to today? Is it, do I feel a formal, maybe a little bit of a distant relationship with God? Or is it a, a more familiar relationship with God? Uh, I'd like to continue and, and um, discuss with you another idea that the Midrash has. Um, the Midrash talks about the Avot. Now, we're, we're all familiar with the Avot, uh, and we saw how um, they each were involved in tefillah throughout their lives, and again, as the, the Gemara said, throughout the day. But the Midrash also wants 
to um, have a certain symbol attached to each of the avot. The Midrash says that each of the avot have a symbol that they assigned to them. Abraham is likened to a mountain, Yitzchak to a field, and Yaakov to a house. And I'd love to think about why and, and how this connects to us and our tefillah. Let's think about Abraham as a mountain. And again, as I mentioned before, Abraham is the one who is in the morning waiting and standing up before God and davening. Again, the amad, he's standing. What is a mountain? Right? Think about, uh, again, I guess it depends where you are standing in relation to the mountain. But if you're standing at the mountain, at the foot of the mountain, there's definitely some awe involved when I look up at the top of the mountain. But let's say I'm standing at the top of the mountain, thinking about Abraham. Right? Abraham is that trailblazer. He's the father of faith, the father of monotheism. He's that beacon of light. Where did the beacon go? On the top of the mountain. He's there to inspire everyone. All we need to do is to look up. And I think that's the idea of Abraham it, with the symbol of the mountain, right? This idea of sacrifice, the akedah. There is some distance, but this idea of awe, of yirah. Let's go to Yitzchak. Yitzchak is the sadeh, the field. And I think it really comes from the pasuk that we mentioned before. The pasuk of, of Yitzchak going out, lasuach basadeh. He's going out to converse with God in the field. What happens in the field? Uh, a few months ago, we, it was Shavuot. Uh, I think it was a few months ago. Uh, it was Shavuot, and we read Megillat Lut. The people are in the field. Everybody is gathering in the field. It's a place to reconnect with the community, with, the, with your friends. It's a place to go out and talk. Um, we talk about coming up in Elul de Ezrat Hashem. We have a song, right, a saying, Hamelech Basadeh. Right? Hashem is the king who's going to be in the Sadeh. What does that mean that, that the king is in the field? He's coming closer. He's not in the palace or on the mountain. Right? He is in the field with us. All we have to do is go out and meet him and have that conversation with him. Right? That's Yitzchak, the connection to Eretz Yisrael, to the land that he never left. He has this um, familiar connection with God. That's Yitzchak, the Sadeh. Let's go to Yaakov. Right? Yaakov is the bait, is the house. And if we think about right, God being on the mountain and then being in the field, with Yaakov, he's finally in the house. We bring him in to our house. Right? We have this idea of Beit Yaakov. Right? Am Yisrael is called Beit Yaakov. We are the house of Yaakov. A house is something that's permanent, not temporary. I don't have to go out and travel and climb a mountain. A house is something that uh, we've been in for, for a while right now, but it symbolizes comfort, security, right? a closeness that you can't get anywhere else. And that's the relationship of Hashem with the Bayit, with Yaakov and the Jewish people. This idea that we are so familiar with God, we don't even have to leave our homes. Um, and that's another type of relationship. So again, we have Abraham davening in the morning and standing before God like a mountain with that awe of relating to God as a king. We have Yitzchak who goes out in the afternoon to be in the fields, to converse with God, a more familiar kind of uh, relationship in the field where we talk with our friends. And finally, we have Yaakov at night, talking to God, again, out of desperation, but also out of a familiar um, bond that Yaakov has with God, that at any moment, at any time, he can reach out and call for Hashem. And I think when we think about our tefillah, this really is meant to inspire us. And I think that this is the deeper meaning to the Gemara that we started with at the beginning. When the Gemara asks, 
Is the tefillah because the avot davened or because of the korbanot? And as I said, ultimately it's both of them. I think we're meant to draw inspiration from the avot, to think about how each one of the avot, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, related to God in his, in his own special way. Each and every one of us need to find our own special way to relate to Hashem. And again, that doesn't need to be consistent. Every tefillah could be different. Every time I open up my sidur to daven or to say tehillim, right, I could be thinking about God in a different way. Right? There's so many ways to relate to Hashem. And I think the challenge is for each one of us to kind of tap into how am I going to relate to Hashem today? Today, when I'm davening, how am I going to relate to Hashem? As a melech, as a king, as a father, avinu, again, avinu malkinu, we're going to, you, we said this morning, we're going to say this afternoon, right? Avinu malkinu, within that one line, we're, we're recognizing that there's so many ways to relate to Hashem. And I think that's really the answer to our challenge and our question that we had in the beginning. Yes, we have structured tefillah. That being said, I don't think that there's anything wrong with um, wanting to call out to God whenever we want, with whatever format we want. But we have a structure that was put in place many years ago by Rabbanim who said, this is what tefillah should look like for generations. And it's up to each and every one of us to think about how am I going to relate to this tefillah, these words, this tefillah, this moment. And I think that's why when we say Shmona and we start our Amida, we start with the first bracha, which is the bracha of the Avot. And we say that, how do we relate to God? Elokei Avraham, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov. Why do I need all of that? We said that, that Hashem is the God of our avot. Why do we have to enumerate each one specifically? And I think the answer is exactly what we just said. Each one had his own special relationship with God, and that's a challenge to each and every one of us, or an inspiration to each and every one of us, to find our own inspiration, our own personal connection to Hashem. And with that, I really uh, bless all of you to find that inspiration. And again, even if you don't find it today or you don't find it tomorrow, it's okay. I think you just have to keep going and just try to think about, again, a few ideas, morning, afternoon, and night, right? Standing, conversing, or happening upon God. All of these things are wrapped up in our tefillah and there for us to find inspiration. Uh, with that, we're now going to end off with reading Tehillim in an exciting and interactive way that will connect all of us who are on today. Um, through this exciting app, we'll each receive a different parak of Tehillim, allowing us to collectively complete the book of Tehillim in real time, in minutes. Tune into this short video, and thank you very much. On behalf of Abraham's legacy, in partnership with Torah Anytime, we are excited to lead you in a Tehillim reading, where each and every one of us, from wherever we are in the world, can easily join in and complete a book of Tehillim in unison, within minutes, through a very special app called Abraham's Legacy, Tehillim Together, in memory of Avraham ben Polin. To be part of the global Tehillim read happening now, download Abraham's Legacy on your mobile device from the App Store available for iOS and Android. You can also scan this QR code with your phone. To scan a QR code, simply open the camera on your phone and hold it up to this image. A link will appear on top, which you can click and it will direct you to download the app. I'll give you all a moment to download the app. Sign in, and in a minute, we will all click on the Start Reading button on the main screen and each of us will receive a different peric from the Sefer of Tehillim so that we can complete the book and add to the global count. In the top right corner, you can click the icon to switch your language if you like. You'll also be able to see in real time the amount of people reading and countries reading. Don't forget, you'll need to confirm that you've completed the chapter. 
Let's put a few minutes on the clock to read in unison with Torah Anytime members from around the world so that we can unleash the power of our combined tefillah. Tizku mitzvot. Everybody can finish reading up the, the Perek, the Perek that they're currently on. I want to thank you so much for being on and for sharing. I very much enjoyed your talk, and I'm so happy and honored that you are part of this. So I'm thank so you. happy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's amazing. Thank you.